Good evening from my side, everyone. Um, I'm Bharat Hussain, and I'm, I'm currently starting in the second semester. So um, today I would like to present uh, or I would talk about um, uh, time and location in Gorwa. So I asked uh, Hezekiah so many questions, but uh, I could manage uh, to translate some of them. So I will discuss uh, those sentences. So let's start with my uh, first example. Um, so my first example is Mao Igawai Kokona. That uh, so that means uh, the cat is on the bed. So yeah, um, as I highlighted with the red, um, uh, highlighted with the yellow color, Gawai. Gawai here means on, and it's a, a locational noun. So um, locational nouns uh, are words um, that describe where something is located, and they help us um, or they help provide um, details, more details about the location. So here, uh, Gawa is a locational noun and it means on. So it tells us where the cat is, the location of the cat. So the location of the cat is on the bed. So so in Gawa, um, locational nouns are typically uh, derived from the common noun. So here, Gawai uh, means stop, and it is derived from the common noun Gawa, that means stop. And likewise, uh, my second example is uh, Impirimo i Gawa Misa. So here, um, Gawa is uh, also a locational noun, which um, indicates uh, the location of the ball. So we can see the ball is on the table. So here, Gawa is a location noun that means on. And imperimo means ball, and misa uh, stands for table, and he is a verb here. Okay, and yes, and my third example is uh, a mao ibarado. So um, it, it means in English that the cat is inside the house. So bara is uh, also a location noun here. So that means, uh, and it is derived from the common noun bara, that means side. So bara here tells us uh, where the cat is actually is. So the cat is in the house. Okay, now um, let's go to the next example. So in in Gorwa, um, some locational nouns uh, are highly selective and they must follow um, another specific uh, locational noun. So here, uh, the example is infirmo uh, ibara goro misa. That means uh, the ball is under the table. So goro uh, here is a locational noun that means uh, under or underneath. And it is derived from the uh, common noun gura, that means stoma. But here, as I said, that um, some locational nouns are highly selective. So here, Bara is a highly selective locational noun, and it follows uh, another specific noun that is uh, bara. So when it occurs, um, or when it yeah, when it occurs after bara, it means uh, underneath. But when goro um, occurs or follows uh, another specific noun, which is amor, it means uh, inside. Like um, you can see that Amor Goro Mari, that means inside the cave. And Amor is also a um, locational noun, and it means at, and it is derived uh, from the common noun Amor, that means uh, place. Um, so the uh, Goro is a uh, highly selective locational noun, and it always follows a, a, a another specific locational noun like Bara and Amor. And um, next um, example is um, the girl is uh, behind the tree. So Gorwa speakers say, Desi uh, Palo Kano. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, maybe Kano. Okay, let it go. Uh, so in Gorwa, there are some locational nouns that um, do not follow any uh, any other specific location noun and they can, um, uh, they can, you know, occur in any order. So here, alo is one of them. So alo don't doesn't follow any other specific location noun, and it 
here tells us and here it means uh, behind and it is derived uh, from the common noun uh, that is alo, which means rear. So here alo means behind and it tells us where the girl is. So the girl is behind the tree. Here, well, let's go to the next example. Okay, my next example is uh, the meeting is um, scheduled for tomorrow. So tomorrow is, yeah, here is a um, temporal adverb. And a Gorway speaker say, uh, Dinkoma quadre has motlu. So motlu here stands for tomorrow. But in Gorwa, uh, motlu can have uh, two different meanings. Uh, one is uh, tomorrow, another one is uh, in the morning. So uh, when motlu is used as an uh, absolute time, here eti means absolute time. So when motlu used as an as, um, absolute time, it means tomorrow. But when motlu used uh, uh, as a relative time, here RT means relative, it stands for um, in the morning. So in my example, uh, motlu is used um, um, as an uh, absolute time. That's why it means uh, tomorrow. And here goes my another example, which is uh, the sun rises in the east so in gorwa it is loa at dao in wati meet so here the locational noun is east and in gorwa dao means east and it uh, tells or indicates that uh, indicates the location of where the sun rises so dao here means east but um in gorwa um uh, there are some nouns which, uh, uh, there are some singular nouns which doesn't have any uh, plural form. So here, loa means sun, and it's um, uh, it's okay. And uh, here, loa is loa's nota is a, a singularia tantum. So nota means notes, and uh, singularia tantum means um, singular only. So. The sun or the lower words in Gorwa doesn't have any uh, plural form. It only exists uh, exists in a singular form. Here, here's my next example. So, yeah, um, the example is the women are at school. Uh, so Gorwa speakers say uh, Amina Ibrado Isa Sule Kiti. So in Gorwa, so here the location noun is school. So here, yeah, Sule means school in Gorwa. Uh, but um, in Gorwa, some words are uh, loan words. Uh, so Sule is one of them. And it's a um, unnativized loan words from Suhali. So as we can see that Suhali uh, school is said as a Shule. So it's Sule in Gorwa is an unnativized loan words. And unnativized loan words um, are those words uh, where the borrowed words um, um, still retain uh, some aspects uh, of the of their original form, and they are not fully integrated as suffixes. So here, uh, the suffix um, e e or w e is uh, added to indicate the singular form of school, which is sule, and Next, the suffix um, ado is added to indicate the plural form of um, a school, which is soledo. But here, uh, the e vowel, um, here the e vowel of the original stem is still present. Because when you say the plural form um, of sule in Gora, we, they say soledo, not sulado. So the e vowel of the um, original stem remains present here. Okay, and here goes my last example, uh, which is the dog um, sleeps at night. So uh, in Gorwa, it is um, so I in a go amsi. So in Gorwa, uh, nouns must be uh, pronounced with appropriate tones. Uh, otherwise, uh, they are misunderstood or they are considered uh, 
incorrect. So here we can see that in Gorua, Amsi means night, but Amsi with a, a high tone or raise, um, rising tone on E is a proper name um, typically given to a boy or a girl born at night. So by seeing this example, we can say that uh, different tones uh, in Gorua can differentiate the meaning of word. Like the Amsi, like the Amsi with a level tone means night, but Amsi with a high tone or a raising tone at the end uh, means a proper name or stands for a, or refers to a proper name. So yeah, this is the difference um, I could find. And yeah, that's all my research, my little research is about, all about. And here is the reference uh, I used to collect my data. So yeah, thanks to all for, for, uh, for your time and listening to me. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rahat. And no research is little. It always contributes to the greater whole. So I think you should be you should be quite pleased with the uh, the research that you did. And uh, so you've kind of established this core of location and time concepts in Gorwa. Now that you've done this, do you have any thoughts of what further questions, if you had more time to ask, what would you what would you now explore to get sort of more of these concepts? Or how would you go further? What would be your next steps in your research? Okay, uh, um, if I further research Korwa, I would, uh, and I get the opportunity to discuss with you or Hajike, I would like to ask uh, about uh, some, you know, temporal adverbs like, uh, in the morning or at the evening how do they say it because uh, i uh, couldn't find anything in, uh, in my research like this but uh, i want to know how this kind of things in guru are used or how to say this kind of things yeah so uh so we now have three people who are interested in working on adverbs of 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 time and and location so we need to start a special study group or apply for one of those big fancy european research uh, projects on uh, on on time and location uh, adverbs in Gorwa. This is great. Um, I expect that like a lot of these questions are coming up through the fact that there's just not a lot written about them. So there are sort of big, uh, big questions. Um, I appreciate you sort of identifying that Gorwa, you a lot of these concepts that we would think of as maybe prepositions in English, for example, you've identified them as coming from nouns. And um, I wonder, did you identify any prepositions at all uh, in your data, or was it just the uh, locational nouns? Um, is, was it? Uh, it was just uh, the locational noun. Just the locational nouns. Very cool. And I think and I think sometimes the argument could be made, do we really even have any real prepositions in Gorwa? Very interesting. Do we have any questions or comments from the uh, room? None. Yeah. Uh, thanks for our presentation. And I saw you give us some general um um yeah uh, words uh, for uh yeah time in Gora. yeah and i also uh, yeah and uh saw my examples and i i say that in my Gora sentences there are um, also i have questions on those that in the morning and at night and i found that many Sentences that his Akea spoken and didn't give a specific word for that in the morning or at night, but there are some like uh, changes, some uh, verbs or something like that to express in the morning or at night. Yeah, and I also see that in the example, in, he has. Um, Motu, motu means tomorrow and in the morning. 
And I also, in my examples, I found the mod two and also to mod two. Um, so it's too different. Maybe it just use nouns to express adverbs in some situation, um, but in other situation, they have uh, some specific, but, and I think it's very interesting. And uh, to use, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, different examples in situation maybe we can have a discuss in our future study again yeah thank you that's all that i want to say yeah thanks nan uh rahat do you have anything that you'd like to add to that or do you have would you like to respond to nan's uh, helpful comments there hey ma'am i think um if she asked um Hezekiah about something like uh, at the evening, maybe Hezekiah replied uh, 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 mm, or at the, uh, every morning, maybe he replied that mat latle, which stands for every morning. I'm not sure about this. This is true. We get different forms. We certainly get moto and then we get mat ate. And um, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure what the specific difference is there. I don't know if I've glossed those two as the same or as different. So, uh, yeah, you guys uh, need to need to figure out these uh, these semantic differences between these forms. Very cool. Um, I really like this because these these little tiny things that I might sort of put to one side and say, okay, well, I'll worry about it later. Um, uh, you you guys are doing a very good job of sort of highlighting them and saying, hey, wait a second here. Now we don't have a we don't have a satisfactory description of what these forms are doing. Um, I also appreciate Nan's comment on the idea that some things that we might think of as work that an adjective might get done in one language are being done by a noun in another language. So you get these interesting mismatches. And I think that that's also very valuable and useful. And it's something that you sort of bring to your talk as well, Rahat, this idea of certain concepts being done by different and maybe unexpected parts of speech. Uh, do you have any thoughts or comments on that? I don't know if you if if you have anything that you'd like to add. In, in the, we have a couple hands up in the room, so so uh, Louis, why don't you why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I also have some examples in my research that, especially when I say go home, go to somewhere, that bara this this preposition is a little bit confusing. I don't know. It's, go to somewhere and going somewhere is supposed to be saying bara, and I can see uh, how I have to do is like it could be in the side, but it's uh, sometimes so confusing. So I think maybe we work more about this preposition. And uh, I have another question that is not so clear for me. Is um, on slide eight that in the morning tomorrow we talk about absolute time and relative time. Is it there some tone changing to uh, identify? Um, Rahat, would you like to just skip back to slide eight for us? Brilliant. So I don't know if you heard that question. We was asking. Are those two forms, the tomorrow and the in the in the morning, are they exactly the same, or do we hear a tone difference as well? Okay, well, these are exactly the same. There is no tone difference. Yeah. Moto, moto. <laughs> well, so so then Louis says, okay, so it's a guessing game, and sometimes maybe that's the case. Maybe there's ambiguity, but then also. Uh, we have this uh, larger context as well in a sentence. So sometimes you can work out the exact meaning from the context too. Prof. Sommer has her hand up. Yeah, thank you very much for this um, very rich presentation. And um, I was particularly intrigued by the location now, so your first part. But of course, what tri was triggered was when yeah, some time ago, there was a discussion about grammaticalization. So taking body part nouns that in many languages kind of over time or with kind of certain tendencies to develop into, for instance, preposition or postposition. So I was looking for the kind of relationship of the examples you gave. You had the noun for top. 
and the meaning on. So I could see the connection here. And then I stopped seeing connections with the term for stomach, which is, a, well, it's a body part. But then you said it's under or underneath. So I wondered, hmm, does that really work? So um, my question, or let's take that as a comment, but the question maybe is, um, did you come across other body parts, like stomach, that played a role in your categorization of location nouns and, yeah, you didn't use the term proposition here. So the term that denotes some location, let's put it this way. Did body parts play a role? What nouns for body parts? Rahat, did you hear Prof. Summer's question? I can repeat it if you need, if you need. Could you please repeat it? I... So Prof. Summer have... noticed that a lot of these locational nouns that you were mentioning, uh, so words for on and in and under, et cetera, seem to be related. So you you had mentioned that they that they came from or they may be related to nouns. And what she had noticed was that a lot of these nouns are body part nouns. So uh, the question that Prof. Zummer asked is, do you see any other body parts uh, in addition to um, in addition to stomach and side? Do you see any other body parts that are used um, in uh, expressing location in Gorwa? So if we talk about bara or yeah, bara guro, that slide was a good one to look at. So we have like the word bara, which could be side. And if we go forward one slide, Rahat, yeah, we have the word like bara guro, and guro is stomach, and stomach means underneath. Did in your data did you come across any other um, locational nouns that might be body parts? Okay, I can um, give an example of uh, that. Uh, okay, gawa dan da ando kano, which means on top of the tree. Good example. Yeah. yeah, so here gawa means on and dan da ando means top. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I should say that danda. If you look at the word for danda, and of course we don't expect you to have done this, but if you look at the word for danda, it means back. All right, so that's another body part. Yeah. And if we find um, a lot of nouns, the side is not a body part, and rear is not a body part, but for me it seemed like a step from the body part denotation to something else, and then to something that is translated in our English uh, translations into preposition, on or in, and so on. So thank you for, for these exciting examples. And uh, thank you very much, Rahat, for a really solid, interesting um, presentation.